We've been using lead clips for the entire session and making sure the lead's done on all the bites. Because we're fishing at such a long range, we need the leads to come off and the fish to come up in the water. Really important. We're going to look at some of my alternative rigs for fishing at long range. They're very good for anti-tangle and they're very aggressive at hooking the fish as well. So the first one, not dissimilar to the rig I had made with a 30 pound end trap semi stiff, but this is 20 pound hybrid stiff. So quite a stiff coated material. You can see there in that long length, it's not really that stiff. I've used this down to sort of three or four inches long on a hard gravel bottom, but because that lead's burying out there, I've extended it so it's probably 10 inches long, something like that. Still with the bit of putty on it, you can see there to hold everything down on the bottom, just in case that lead really is plugged in and the hook link's sticking up high out the bottom, that bit of putty will help the bit near the hook to lay flat on the bottom. The setup's exactly the same on the end, so I've got a size four cap to curve, made barbless. The ring on the shank of the hook, just leaving the hook roughly where the barb should be. And then a bit of shrink tube aggressively angled inwards to help it flip over and catch hold. And then our old faithful cell dumbbell there tipped off with a bit of IB corn. That's what's been doing the business. And on the other end there, you see down by the ring swivel, I've actually crimped it rather than tying a knot. And crimping with the small size crimp actually gives a much stronger breaking strain than if you were tying a knot in it. And it's very, very easy to do. And of course, you can get your hook links exactly the right length every time. So that's a good alternative to the end trap semi stiff. And then moving down onto the next one. This is a rig I've used for many, many years. See very few people using this one. It's basically mono straight through. This is IQ2 in 15 pounds breaking strain tied onto the hook with my favourite whipping knot. You could use a knotless knot as well, but you see there, what I've done is I've cut the end of the knot off. So what would normally be the hair is cut away, and then the hair is tied onto the hook using a bit of braid. In this case, I've used 30 pound armour cord, but you could use any decent braid, quite a short hair. And then I've got one of those dumbbells on there with a bit of plastic corn, and that's just gonna sit nice and flat on the bottom. And then moving down, I've still got my sinker on there and a bit of putty to help everything sit flat on the bottom. And at the other end, I've simply got a ring swivel, nothing to get in the way, nothing to get tangled, and I've just tied onto that with a four turn half blood knot. And a little trick on those, wet it, and then pull the tag end tight first, and then tighten the hook link, and you won't kink that fluorocarbon at all. And that turns over and catches hold really aggressively, especially coupling it with a size four curve like that. That's really good, and because it's mono all the way down, it almost never tangles, which is very, very important when we're chucking a long way. And then the last one, this is the one I've caught most of my big fish on over the last couple of years. Again, 15 pound IQ2 straight through, but you can see there on the hook, I've actually tied a D. So I've tied my favorite whipping knot first, then put a micro rig swivel on there. And then I've tied the knotless knot to form the D. Next on goes the sinker and a little bit of putty around it to hold everything flat. And then at the other end, I've got it tied with a four turn half blood knot again. So essentially very similar to the last rig, but that D basically helps the bait and the hook to separate in the fish's mouth and the hook can turn and catch hold really quickly. And where I've got one of the tiny micro rig swivels on there, it means the bait can turn without turning the hook. So that means the hook turns very aggressively because it hasn't got to turn the bait as well. The only downside to this one, I like to tie it up with PVA tape or put a little bit of rig foam on it just to make sure that that bait doesn't fly around on the D and end up hooking itself on the cast. But any mono hook link like that, or one of the coated hook links with hardly any braid exposed, will cast really well and hardly ever tangle. So if you've got a fish a long way out, that's what I recommend.